Once again, it is time to take a little revealing peek back into history. What famous date shall I set it to today? Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to A Vices in Teramo, 30 Minutes to Kill. Again? I, yet again. Yeah. Is this four, like take four? Fourth time to charm here. So okay, no more technical difficulties. Let's hope not. We've had those the last couple of weeks, and I got to thank the audience for bearing with us, provided we have an audience still. <laughs> There's nobody listening. <laughs> At any rate, uh, I'm Michael Mad Saxon Jones, and this is my lovely wife, Lori. Mm-hmm. Say hello, Lori. No. Hello. Okay. So, uh, as I said, this is episode 46. It might be a bit cliche, but today's movie review is on Halloween. Halloween 3, to be exact. We picked the one standout episode, or make that standalone episode. Um, so anyhow, yeah, that's going to be our, our podcast for this week. It's October. You have to do Halloween-themed movies. Unfortunately, everybody else does, too, but uh, we did think it's this October. would be fun. Okay. It has to. Okay. Yeah, I love October. I can tell. Uh, we may have a brief laid-to-rest segment here where we follow up on last week's movie. Uh, we'll do our movie review of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, and then we'll finish up with Garbage In, Garbage Out, where we'll talk about a couple of really underrated 80s movies that uh, I just don't understand why you don't love them as much as I do. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. What do you have planned? Buckaroo Banzai and Remo Williams. Oh. Was that a groan? No, it was a O. Oh. All right. I said O, oh, not uh. Okay, well, you'll so say that. So that almost later. came out. I stopped it. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Um, let's talk about last week's episode. Um, we had at least one person chime in. Uh, that would be Jason from Horophilia. We always mm-hmm. good to hear from him. And uh, he didn't necessarily agree with what you were saying but then in the end i think you guys did kind of agree on the lost you again so i hope it's recording it is recording sorry i didn't mean to we're having technical difficulties again we are but they're doing fine now okay okay so uh did you hear what i said about jason um i did okay so like i said when uh when it ended up i think you guys are pretty much on the same page there yeah well, he said they all really loved it. All the guys over there at Horophilia, mm-hmm. they all really loved it and put it on their top ten list for that year. Um, I can see why they might have done that. He was saying, you know, they really felt there was a deeper story, which you could absolutely dig a deeper story out of it. But it I worked just pretty hard to do that, though. Well, that was the thing for me. I wanted. I don't know what I wanted. It it just seemed to be stuck going in one direction the whole time. But um, when I when I um, wrote back to Jason, I told him that uh, I the part that I think I loved the most, in spite of when the girl at the uh, gas station, when the guys are trying to kidnap her and she <laughs> kicks the crap out of him. <laughs> that, that is the best some part. Good comedy. That was great. <laughs> but I mean, that aside, because yeah, that was the hi- that was a highlight absolutely of the movie. That was yes. great. Yes, it was. And we forgot to mention it last week, which was ridiculous. But I know we went way over. Yeah. But um. My, the part that I liked the most in this movie, and it was about a three seconds, maybe, Mm -hmm. it showed after the dead girl was let loose, it just showed a very quick clip of her just running out into the night. Right. And that for me was the highlight of the movie because then I was like, oh, where is she going? What's going to happen to her now? Yeah. You know, where is she going next? What kind of stories are going to, could be built on that or, but as for this movie and how it was done, yeah, it just didn't really fly for me. Right. Well, that was a lot to set through for a three second payoff for you, for sure. (laughs) I guess so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that brought up another thing, which is Al. We got to hear from Al and we actually got to hear from him in person. He, uh, he asked me why in the world did we even put ourselves through that movie? (laughs) Okay. Didn't say it quite like that. It was pretty close. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah, it was just very interesting last week cuz we got a lot of responses and people were either like, "Oh, no, it's a great movie," or 
why did you guys waste your time, you know, spend your time doing good movies, not crap like that? So, wow, it really evoked a lot of different opinions. Definitely And polarizing. it was extremes. I didn't hear from anybody in the middle. Right. I feel like I'm more in the middle, actually. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not. I'm more towards the, oh, God, I want my two hours back of my life. But uh, but I see the potential. I do see the potential that it had. Right. Yeah. And I think that um, that it's one of those things where um, the reason we went ahead and did the movie is because, at least as far as I'm concerned, on my, on my side of things, um, you know, it's like anything else. I, anything with the freedom of speech or anything else, you know, I may not like what you have to say, but I'll defend your right to say it. So same thing with this movie, not my kind of movie, not one that I necessarily enjoyed, but you know what? I'm not everybody and I'm not going to stand in judgment for everybody. So, you know, that might appeal to somebody out there. I don't necessarily agree with it, but you know, it's your right to enjoy it and stuff. So <laughs> my sound like I'm on a soapbox. Let me yes. S- I was going to say, get down off that soapbox. No, it yeah. sounded like a disclaimer or something. something These like are that. just opinions and we need like an official statement, I guess. Or right. something. Well, yeah, we're lucky- I think anyone who listens to us on a regular basis, they know how we are. We're not, uh, it's funny because uh, a lot of reviews and things I read and listen to people are just, this was crap and it just was, you know, I, I can still, I see why people like what they like and it's all just opinions and yeah, nobody's correct. Right. So, you know, you find someone who does reviews that you agree with oftentimes and then you know that if they recommend a movie or they say stay away, you can kind of get a feel for how they are. If they're like you, then you know you can, you know. You can count on them to... Yeah, but it's all just opinions, and boy, we are all so different, but that's what makes it so much fun. Absolutely. So let's move on. Okay. Um, Anything else for laid to rest? I don't think so, except, do you have something? I don't think so. I felt like I did, but I I don't know. I guess not. I'll give you a second, because one other thing that I was going to include here, normally towards the end of the episode, we've been telling you where you can find us. But uh, I want to bring this up at this point. And uh, one of the places you can find us is LAPodcasters.com. You can find us, as always, on HillbillyAds.com under Hillbilly Radio. Unfortunately, Penny Cult is going away. Mm. That's uh, that's heartbreaking news to me. Um, it Actually, I shouldn't say it's going away. Uh, it's just going to morph into something else. I think, uh, I think Jay's got some ideas for, for where that's going to go, and it's just not going to be in the same incarnation that it is now so uh, i feel lucky that we were able to get there in there when we did and to make some good podcasting friends and learn about a lot of good shows to uh to listen to by going to uh pennycult.com so i just wanted to mention that now and uh we'll keep an eye on them absolutely we'll see what they're up to and we'll talk about it even even better than that uh i'm going to be on the lunar cast oh well i'm so excited (laughs) <laughs> that's nice it is man i Happy love the full moon movies <laughs> anyhow uh we're getting yeah. off topic here so let's get back to the movie at hand which is uh halloween three season of the witch so uh we'll take a brief break while you answer the door and um then we'll get back to it <laughs> Between the real and the unreal. 
and the dead might be looking in. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red. You happen to know anything about this, Cochran? All I can tell you, mister, is watch out. Season. He's watching you, friend, I guarantee you that. Hey, Mr. Cochran, just what is the final process? Fellas, I was just kidding. It... Witchcraft. To us, it was a way of controlling our environment. Hey! Where are they taking her? They're taking her to the factory. I want a mask. Can I have a mask? Uh, uh, just what I had in mind for you, little buddy. Why, Cochran? Why? Do I need a reason? I've got nothing here to indicate there was ever a body at all. Operator, this is an emergency. I do love a good joke, and this is the best ever. A joke of the children. I'm glad you'll be able to watch it. You've got to believe me. That quick kill us. All of us. Stop it. The world's going to change tonight, Doctor. Happy Halloween. Stop it! Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, the night no one comes home. Let's do our review for Halloween 3. Let's start out by, if anybody hasn't already seen this, what's a recap of what this movie's about, Lori? Well, I will tell you. Uh, first of all, it's a movie from 1982, rated R, 96 minutes. Uh, here we go. Dr. Daniel Chalice and Ellie Grimbridge stumble onto a gruesome murder scheme when Ellie's novelty salesman father, Harry, is killed while in possession of a strange mask made by the Silver Shamrock Mask Company. The company's owner, Connell Cochran, wants to return Halloween to its darker roots using his masks, and his unspeakable scheme would unleash death and destruction across the country. Was that a pretty good description? That's a pretty darn exciting uh, <laughs> synopsis for a somewhat lackluster movie. Yeah. Um. But it was I, very 80s. It, it, was it was so 80s, Yeah, which I like. I was going to say, I, I did, having said this, and mm -hmm. uh, though we are going to, well, I'm going to be somewhat negative towards it, I, I do enjoy it still, sort of, in a weird way. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've seen it multiple times, and we do own it, so then again, we own lots of things. Yes. Anyhow. Well, it was for sake of completion, because, of course, the Halloween series is my all-time favorite. Right. Of course, three doesn't really fit, but it's a bit of Halloween history. It had to be in there. We had to buy number three. Right. And mm -hmm. initially, that was kind of the, the route that they were going to take, that since mm -hmm. Michael Myers had died off in the second Halloween movie mm -hmm. uh, in 81, they thought, well, let's make a new Halloween movie each year that yeah. has something to do with Halloween, but, you know, has the... Uh, it was a great idea. Uh, yeah, I think so. I would but, love to see it done. Well, I guess I'm torn there because that's a great idea coming out with a new Halloween story every year. You could depend on, oh, how the next Halloween is coming out. Wonder what the story is going to be. That would have been totally fun. Mm -hmm. However, I wouldn't have had my Michael Myers. Well, that's so, true. Well, and, I'm and I guess it didn't test well. I mean, uh, uh, it, as far as if that's correct, what I read, um, American audiences. They were like, what's this crap? You know, Halloween 3, what is, you know, right. where's that Michael Myers character? <laughs> so, of course, he was only on television in this movie. So, so I get it. I mean, but it's it's interesting little bit of Halloween history there. Yeah, and I don't think I was suggesting necessarily to do that instead of the continuation of the movies, but along oh, with in it. Oh, addition to, wow. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm thinking of, like, uh, from Trick or Treat. I think that was... <sighs> A great movie that uh, would have been great, you yes. know, every year if you could count on an anthology movie that would yeah. be that would be fun. I mean, they sort of did that with the Saw movies, you know. Every oh. every Halloween was another Saw, but I know you don't particularly oh, no. care for those. So, no Halloween themed. Halloween themed. Halloween themed. October Halloween. 
October. Absolutely. Not Saw. Okay. Not anything else. Halloween stories. Okay. It has Trick or Treat. That was, I mean, I know a lot of people saw it and hated it, but it was so much fun. Yeah. I thought that was great, but... But the movie today is Halloween 3, so tell me, what are, your, focus. what are your thoughts regarding Halloween 3? Um, it's a little slow. Mm-hmm. That's probably my, I feel that every time I watch it. Okay. Um, I love the soundtrack, classic Halloween soundtrack. Yeah, John um, Carpenter, definitely. Yes, yep, he's the best. Um, like I said, it's a very 80s feeling movie. And with- it's... Is makes it totally fun for me. Okay, and I was going to say it's interesting just watching this movie. It's uh, to me it was interesting how quickly we adapt to the technology as the computer systems they were using, as well as um, mm-hmm. even the mechanics that they had for the. Um, well, I mean, I guess I don't think it's a big spoiler to say that there are robots or automatons in there, but they. Um, they were using clock springs and stuff like that. It was, yeah. I don't know. It just it seemed kind of quaint at this point. It, it was no data. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. At first, I was like, "Hey, they're better than data," because the one sneezed, right? And the guys all lifelike, aren't they? Or are convincing, aren't they? But then they were just so rigid, though. I was like, "Nah, data's better." Yeah. Data could sneeze if he wanted to. You see. Okay. But yes, it was interesting. The one that gets blown up in the car and burns. It's like all these big springs and stuff, like total just like we were learning about automata this week in school, which that's a totally different thing. But yeah, it looked like you said quaint. It looked like that. I mean, he had that one animatronic woman sitting in the chair knitting and Mm -hmm. she was from 1700s. Right. But she looked very lifelike. But yeah, internally, they're just so. Yeah, I'm. I want to say vintage, I guess. Yeah, that's a, that's a good description. Big springs and clockwork things, big gears and right. wired things. <laughs> you know, this had to have been uh, the 80s also because it was the time when you could still smack a coworker on the butt and not get reported for it, evidently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there were so many small little touches that, uh, like I said, just made it right down to the phone at the very end of the movie that... Uh, well, we yeah. still actually have that phone, but you went out of the way to get that. Oh, yeah. Your My old... green rotary dial telephone from exactly. the 70s. I bought it on eBay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm stuck in the 70s. I just, I really miss all that stuff. That's I'm not a big modern technology person. Isn't it funny because I'm the biggest sci-fi fan ever? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, crazy. Anyway, it's a paradigm. Yes. Okay. But we're not really talking about the movie. No, we um, aren't. Let's get back to the movie. Well, yes, because we read the synopsis, and it doesn't really doesn't really explain it, does it? No, not at all. Because there's basically, okay, a guy from Ireland, and he lives here now in California. Um, he's obviously, I don't know how much you want. Well, are there say, big spoilers here? I don't know. I don't think there are. I think when you watch the movie that you've seen it by now, or you aren't, or you haven't. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're just going to be watching it for fun. So so you want to talk about yep. what this man's goal is? Go right ahead. I was asking you if you wanted to. Okay, well, the much. goal is to return Halloween back to its roots, its scary, creepy roots of druid sacrifice and such. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to that end, somehow they've kidnapped Stonehenge, which <laughs> wasn't exactly... Uh, Well, I mean, you have to be listening real close because you hear it on the news report. And even though I've seen it a couple of times, you really got to listen for that. But yeah. Well, now, and how much of it did they, because when it shows the inside of the factory, they've got one huge piece of it. Mm -hmm. Did they literally take Stonehenge? Well, I don't know because I was hard, it was hard to tell with the way the set was dressed up that were those supposed to be multiple slabs around the edge of it or was it just that one slab they were digging on? Yeah, that could have been done a little better and a little more clear. Yeah, it has, it has, this movie suffers from what a lot of 80s movies do or a lot of horror movies in general, which is, um, a lot of slow mystery and then they dump a lot of information on you right at the very end of the film yeah. that you didn't necessarily have any way of, of knowing about. 
It just kind of gets glazed over. Yeah, they just kind of, oh, this, 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 and this happened, and that's why. But, and I, I've, I was told by a woman who, when I went to go see um, Halloween 7, and uh, we were a test audience, and I was talking about the story and the Myers curse and all this and that, and I think everyone there that got, I, I was chosen to stay after and talk about it. And that's the day I learned I mean, I should have known and I kind of knew already, but I was pretty much attacked by many people there in the test group that were like, hello, we just want to see blood and guts and slasher. Like, why are you, why you want to bog it down with some story? What's the Myers curse anyway? You know, and I was so sad because I thought, I guess this is the way of the horror movie. It's like throw out the story. People don't want that. So, I mean, as far as this, well, this was 1982. Um, but anyway, of course I was, in this test audience much later, but um, I was going to say, I think audiences just want the scary parts, the jump, the gore, the what, whoever the killer is, the monster. They want to see that. They want to see the chase. Let's go light on the story or just fuzz it over. Cause we don't really care about right. it. I don't know if that's what happened with this one, but well, I had a couple of good jumps in it, but I do think let's talk briefly about the acting. what do you think about Tom Atkins in there? Um, <laughs> he was pretty good, I guess. If for me, he was on and off. There were some scenes that he yeah. was absolutely bo- believable, and others I just I couldn't buy his performance at all. Yes, the girl was awful. She was absolutely awful. And it's funny because I, you know me, I love reading other the reviews on here on mm-hmm. Netflix, and a lot of people thought she did really great. But I think it was more of like a in a classic '80s way, right? Like she was kind of the typical '80s horror actress of the time, mm-hmm. just kind of not great, but really cute. And you know, she's on the mark and everything, but couldn't really carry off the emotion and stuff. Couldn't, didn't have the delivery for sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what about O'Connell? Okay. Or what we, was uh, who? Um. Oh. Um. The the one who played Cochrane? Cochrane, that's it, yes. He was Connell. good. He was great, and that was what I think is interesting when I watch some of these older actors, or they tend to be older actors in in some of these movies. Um, it, it's great that you can see some people that I just absolutely buy their performance from beginning to end every time they're on the screen, and I thought it was great that he was one of those characters that I didn't question for a second anything that he said. Um, I bought all of his lines, but then compared to Tom Atkins, he dropped in and out of yeah kind of character for me. You know, at points yeah. I was looking and going, ah, he's an actor. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, and we didn't, uh, you talked about what Cochran was trying to do and taking Stonehenge, and then you stopped there. And then I stopped there. Okay, so he was using... It's basically a novelty. It's the front. is It's a novelty company, and they make Halloween masks. Right. Three of them, which I always thought was so ridiculous. They've got three to choose from. Well, you know, if you were lucky enough back then, you could have actually bought those masks because they did sell them in promoting the movie. Yeah. You could yeah. have actually chose one of those. Another interesting thing about this when the movie came out was um, I was still, I'm going to say, in junior high or, yeah, junior high. And I remember seeing it in the Fangoria. And I remember seeing that horrific images of things coming out of people's mouths with these Halloween masks. And I thought, wow, that must have been an absolutely terrifying movie. And I wish I had had a chance to see it back then. But, of course, I was too young to get into an R-rated movie and... Well, there were other contributing factors that would have prevented me from seeing it. But um, I would have liked to have compared what I that back then to say how I felt about it. Because now it's a little bit, like you said, it's a little cliche and a little bit uh, dated. And, you know, I'm always going to see it as such. But had I seen it back then when it was new, I wonder what I would have thought of it. Well, I I think the, I mean, dated overall, yeah, because it definitely had that 80s soundtrack uh, in between. But, but I mean, I loved the, wait, let me go back. Um, I love the parts that were very obviously Carpenter's music. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Please edit this out. <laughs> okay. What was the last thing you said? Last and I keep I... losing you again.
affected you, or I was imagining how it might have affected me if I had seen it back then. I'm wondering about that. Yeah. Did you see this movie early on, or when did you see this movie? No, I probably saw it in my 20s. Okay, so you were well um, beyond... No, I would have been in junior high, too. There's no way I would have been able to go see this thing. Well, you might have gone uh, out it at a friend's house on cable or something at some point. Oh, yeah, that's true, but I didn't. Okay. So, yeah, so I actually... My appreciation for it has grown through time, I think. The last time we watched it, I think I fell asleep because, like I said, it does have some kind of slow moments. Um, I hate the part where he's out in the forest and he runs into the tree and he's standing out there. Yeah. He's standing out there and then he's just standing there. <laughs> and I think that's probably where I fell asleep last time. But I was wide awake this time and all jazzed to watch it, so... I think I liked it. This was probably the time I've liked it the best. Okay. I think I just the more I see it, the more I appreciate it. But I thought as far as, I mean, yes, it's dated. It's the 80s, and it's got some bad acting and some big-time 80s horror elements. But I think the effects were good. Some of the effects were quite good, absolutely. Yeah, and, the, and we still, again, we got sidetracked because I was trying to get you to talk about the story more, and we keep getting uh, Shanghai there. Because we talked about, okay, it's a factory, novelties, they're making these masks, and then we like just dropped it off again there. Right. Basically, the masks, each one has a little chip of Stonehenge in it, correct? Mm-hmm. That's correct. Put in the, um, it's got the, the Silver Shamrock logo on the back of every mask, but each one has a little a chip in there, like a little computer chip with a little piece of Stonehenge, right? Yep, that's correct. And so at 9 o'clock... PM on Halloween night. Um, Every- all the kids are to wear their masks and watch the nine o'clock giveaway, <laughs> the Silver Shamrock giveaway, which they never say what that is. So that's always kind of funny to me. But so of course you're hit with the commercial day in and day out, and we love the music. We're gonna have to find it. <laughs> um, so it's annoying, but somehow catchy. But so basically, all the kids at nine o'clock. What's supposed to happen is, well, we see the test family. Right. The little boy, he dies first because he's wearing the mask. And then his parent, it seems like some kind of sonar or some sort of, I don't know, everybody's just holding their heads like they can hear a sound or they're getting hit with some kind of a... um, Sonic black ball. And that's the sacrifice, right? right? And it seems to release some power. He explained as there are lots of sacrifices of children and animals were performed near these rocks. So they've soaked up this energy source or this evil. And when the sound goes off, it releases um, this energy and bugs begin crawling out of people's heads and and so on. So we see that a couple of times in the movie and um, to some creepy effect, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of like that, the whole kind of druid thing and... This uh, Cochran, he's bitter that we've made Halloween all fun and candy, and he wants to take it back to what it should have been. Right. He wants to see sacrifice, and um, which is interesting because that's totally picked up with how, I mean, as the story goes on, and of course, you know this, um, it's one of the things, I love the whole Halloween Michael Myers story because, of course, they work the Druid curse and the Myers curse into the next movies. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had really high hopes for, I know everybody's going to hate me. A lot of people love Rob Zombie's Halloween. Um, I would love it if it was not Halloween, if they changed the title and gave the guy a different name other than Michael Myers. It was a fine movie, but um, he had been interviewed and he said how big of a fan he was of all the original Halloween movies. And he loved the story and he was going to do this movie, and he was really influenced by the Halloween story, but then he didn't put it in there. It was totally missing. It was just... How to create a serial killer 101, pretty much. Yeah, it was a serial killer movie. Yeah, a little kid grows up in a messed up family. He's abused, this and that. He grows up to be a wacko. Okay, that's... That's not Halloween, and that's not Michael Myers. If anybody... For the purists out there, some people are agreeing with me right now and some people are going what yeah this girl doesn't know what she's talking about which i've heard a lot but i do know what i'm talking about (laughs) because michael myers came from a perfectly wonderful middle class family 
no previous problems. And he just flips out one day and murders his sister. Yeah. That's way scarier than a little boy growing up in a messed up family and a messed up household and growing up to be a serial killer. That's typical. Right. My Michael Myers, my original Michael Myers, I love the story because if it's a curse on your family, you know, you got to work it out. You have to figure out what's going on with it and figure out how to undo this curse and what's going on. And unfortunately, the story fizzled out. And obviously, number eight didn't even... uh, Wow. I don't even want to talk about it. Okay. It should have ended with seven. Seven to me, H2O. I loved that one, and I think that was a fine ending. I don't know why they tried to keep going on with eight. And I wanted to see more of the story. And, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So tell me about Halloween 3. Yes. (laughs) Sorry. That's okay. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Getting back to Halloween 3, what else did you have to say about this? Because I think we've pretty much exhausted... uh, I guess that's uh, it. I mean, there's nothing... Oh, I had a couple of things. Do you know what the dead dwarf gag is? Because... I'm curious <laughs> as to what what Cochran uh, did when he made the because uh, he was supposed. Now, to... you, I was going to say you have to explain that a little more now. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the other characters in the movie, it's supposed to be his top salesman for Silver Shamrock, um, was listing off the achievements that they had had done, and one of the things he listed was the dead dwarf gag, and that evidently was a classic in this uh, in this story or in this universe or whatever you want to call it, and. Um, yeah, I just I don't know what that is, so I wanted to know what if you had any idea what the dead dwarf I gag. I don't meant. know. It sounds funny for everybody except maybe the dwarf. It was a novelty item anyway. Yes, indeed. That and the uh, soft chainsaw. Soft chainsaw. That's right. <laughs> Stuff to use your imagination. Yeah. I don't know. So um, one other thing that I did notice, a little point of trivia, was uh, the little boy that appears as Tom Atkins' son in the movie is. Also, uh, grew up to be in Near Dark. It's funny because I recognized him as soon as he came on the screen. I recognized him as being the son uh, in Near Dark, Lance Hendrickson, which is another cool movie. Lance Hendrickson, Bill Paxton, and uh, them after they did the, the Aliens movie. Yeah. Um, good and stuff. It's funny. The, the little boy was only in the movie for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. Because the... the um the dad comes home and hands him the mask and he looks at it and, oh, oh, mom already bought us a mask. And they run over and put him on. He puts the mask on right away. Right. So, I mean, he was only on there for a second. But you were like, oh, who is that kid? I know that kid. Yeah. I had never, I had never noticed. Ah. Well, I think that pretty much brings it to a close. There's maybe some other trivia that you might want to look up on IMD and stuff. Find out that uh, Silver ah. Shamrock was actually a milk factory that... Uh, was convinced for the movie and uh, so on, but uh, cool. what uh, are you going to rate the movie? What's your rating for the movie? Um, I'm going to give it a six because I liked it. Okay. And I'm not, I mean, uh, like I said, a lot of people are upset that it's in the Halloween series, like it doesn't belong there and it's crap and everything, but it has its place and <laughs> I don't know. I liked it. It's fine. Yeah. It's not great. I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm not offended by it. I think uh, if you know what you're in for and stuff and you're not looking for a Michael Myers thing, you want just a Halloween story that's 80s style. And, yeah, I think that's it. So I'll uh, I'll agree with your six on that. And it was interesting because I always like to, like I said, like to look at the reviews on here online. And out of... Wow, 43,764 ratings. It got a real solid two and a half stars because you either give it one or you give it five. (laughs) Like everybody loves it or hates it. Not much in between. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay. And most of the people who hated it were like, where's Michael Myers? Like, I understand. I understand. But, yeah, a lot of people agree that this movie has its place and the story's interesting. And somebody here said that they felt that uh, it should have received an honorary Oscar for best use of Stonehenge in a motion picture. (laughs) So I thought that was kind of funny. That's pretty Uh, funny. So it's interesting. I don't know. Okay. It's campy and it's classic and I like it just fine. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's move on to our... uh... 
garbage in, garbage out segment then. So, Lori, what did you have to talk about in our garbage in, garbage out segment? Uh, well, I'd like to talk about something that is not um, something I've been watching or reading, but it's something that we did this week. What's that? <laughs> uh, we went to Not Scary Farm. Yes, indeed. Yes. What about it? Park. For those who aren't local and don't know, but every year uh, for the month of October, they have the Halloween haunt. Um, the park closes early, and then they get it ready um, for evening, and there's seven or eight haunted mazes, and the whole park is decorated Halloween, and there's fog and monsters roaming around loose, and as far as I could tell online when I read other reviews of different haunted houses and things, I think this is one of the top the top ones in the country. They've been doing it for 35 years now, I think. They should have it down right by now. Yeah. So then there's lots of shows you can go see, hypnotism, and what was that guy? So the something or other, Torture King? I don't know. Uh, but Zamora. there's always lots of cool shows you can go see. And But, I mean, the mazes are awesome. And, of course, they're not scary to us anymore because we're so desensitized. But <laughs> it's fun watching ev- all the guests running around the park screaming their heads off and running for their lives. That's a lot of fun. Definitely. But, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Yep, we got a chance to go this year again, so we missed it when we weren't uh, able to because we were living up. I've been going for like 24 years. Wow. Because I started going when I was in high school. I had never missed, and usually I go twice every year, but yeah, that was sad that one year we had to miss it because we had just moved out of the area. Yeah. There was no way we could come back and go to it right away, but... That's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so talking about things that we've seen, uh, a couple of absolute classics that uh, I, well, one I'm in the process of watching and one that I finished watching. Well, first of all, let's talk about the one I watched. Remo Williams, you, you don't, you said you didn't get that. What? I don't get it. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't normally say this, but I'm going to say it this time. Is it just because it's a guy <laughs> thing and you... A guy thing? Yeah, how could you not get that? How okay, could is you it not... a guy thing? I, maybe. I don't know. It's uh. What does that mean? I, I don't know. I, I don't know a lot of women, I guess, that actually care for the movie or enjoy it. Interesting. But, uh, yeah, well, I don't normally say that, except uh, in this case. Is it just the story didn't seem appealing to you or didn't seem interesting at all? I I can never quite get into it. So there's something just wrong right there for me. Something missing. I understand maybe yeah. not liking it just because I know that the actual creators of the Remo Williams, the Destroyer series, um, didn't particularly care for the movie either because they felt that the source material was changed too much or not adhered to. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, in the original, this is like one of the Mac Bolan novels. It's one of those serialized, formulaic men's books yeah you know and so um but i mean it started i think the first one was published in 1971 um and in the original source material they had him getting uh remo being um well let me start at the beginning remo is a police officer in the movie at least and is framed for a crime he didn't commit and sentenced to death uh, but actually what is happening is he's being recruited for a secret organization called Cure. And um, back in the original source material, they had him getting um, his face changed every six months through plastic surgery. His face would have been silly putty basically after that point. But uh, <laughs> So, I mean, there's a few things in the movie that they didn't adhere to the books. And I that guess would have been creates, more interesting, uh, like silly putty face. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Well, then you would have had Dark Man. So <laughs> I uh, love Dark Man. See, see, yeah, exactly. But this, uh, it's great movie since you get uh, reminded that it's the Korean that is the most perfect being to ever grace the earth with his footprint. Okay. Chun says that. Yeah, I can see you're unimpressed. I don't get it. I can't be the only one that loves this movie. No. So. Okay, now here's, I couldn't help it, I looked up uh, reviews on Netflix, mm-hmm. 
and you're going to be just all happy because out of 110,000 plus ratings, out of five stars, it got 3.5. And that's because it seems like everybody either gave it five stars or one. <laughs> okay. So so there is some love for it out there. And I've got to oh, say. There is a lot of love out here for it. And this person, maybe they're writing this to me. Where did it go? Uh, basically, they said, okay, those of you who aren't getting this movie, I'm going to say it's supposed to be bad. <laughs> and they gave it five stars and said they loved it. Yeah. It's a that formulaic, annoying. like I said, I mean, the books themselves were, there. there's a formula to them, literally, and they admit that. So it was yeah. written by two guys. Um, one guy would start the book, the other guy would finish it. And, um, and it's been one of the longest-running series, like I said. It started around... I think the first story may have even been written about 68 or whatever. It wasn't published till 71, but uh, it was there for years and years. The guys didn't like the the story, the movie itself. They actually even make fun of it in their books later on. Okay. But um, i got to say, it's one of those times where, and this could be um, hypocritical on my point, I don't know. It's one of the times where I'm going to say it doesn't matter that it didn't follow the source material. Normally, when I watch a movie, I'm like, ah, they didn't follow the book and so on. This is an example, I think, of a movie that uh, I never would have known about the books if I hadn't seen the movie. So I think it was worth, you know, worth making a movie out of it and enjoying it. So, okay. Anyhow. Well, you're, you've got lots of company because, like I said, it's got a lot of love I on get. Netflix. Check out the reviews. Okay. You're not alone. Good. Another movie that I enjoyed, Buckaroo Banzai. Did you ever watch that one? Uh, yes. Okay. You care for That's, it at all? Or? That one's better okay. for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All you got to say about it? Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, I got to say, it's got a great cast. Clancy Brown in there, Peter Weller, um, a lot of other people. John Lithgow, of all people, uh, yeah. playing a bad guy, which he does so well. Another crazy, over-the-top 80s movie that I enjoyed immensely, so... Anyhow, that's what's been going on as far as garbage in, garbage out. Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, not unless you want to talk about Fringe again. Well, or I was going to... Go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, I was going to say I was going to bring up Fringe at the very end because my best ever, if I haven't already used this one, is my best ever episode of X-Files is Clyde Berkman's Final Repose. Uh, okay. has Peter Boyle in it. And I, I brought that up because he is somebody that uh, was able to see probability and chance and uh, mm -hmm. actually was a life insurance policy salesman. Um, anyhow, that's a great episode. Check it out if you get a chance. This last week's episode of Fringe um, took that same concept um, and just went uh, a little bit different with it, and I thought it was great. I think that's by far one of my favorite episodes. Yes. I'll have yeah. to agree. Very good stuff. What else did you want to say about Fringe? Um, that's it. Oh, okay. I just wanted to bring it up because I love it. <laughs> I see. We're three episodes in the new season, and so far they've all been really good. Three or four, I want and to say. I, what? Was it four? I thought it was four episodes, but maybe not. Do you do you like this discussion last night? That's true. But anyway, I'm looking forward to this uh, next week's. So, yeah, I'm excited. Is it bothering you that they're flipping back and forth between alternate universes? Um, no, because I was afraid they were going to get stuck in one or the other. Okay. And I don't want to get stuck in our world because I'm not liking the imposter Olivia, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to follow what our Olivia is doing on the other side. Okay. You think that's a spoiler? Okay, if people aren't watching it, I mean... You're either watching it and you know all this already. Okay. If you're not watching it, you don't care, probably. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on. if that on. was a spoiler, someone would have to be renting the first seasons and watching them all and catching up to see what we're talking about anyway. That's true. Yeah. And I think the series is good enough that it's going to hook you in and keep you entertained. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, it would be a hard one to come in right now and try to watch, so... I mean, it's no Lost. Lost was really, unless you were keeping up... Yeah, you know? but it's pretty. It's still though. You need to. You need to absolutely see this from the beginning. 
Absolutely. Is it really, I mean, even though it's X-Files-like and there's always the freak of the week and sometimes it's a little standalone story, there is absolutely the ongoing story about the other side and you really need to know what they're talking about because it all builds up, of course, for the finale. And then this new season, it's, yeah, you really need to be all caught up with what's going on. Otherwise, it's, I don't know how enjoyable it would be. True enough. Yeah. Okay. I love it, though. It's a great show. It is. I really look forward to it. And you know what I'm missing? What are you missing? The gates. <laughs> They're ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Maybe it'll get picked up and come back. Oh, I hope so. All right. Well, on that, I think uh, I'm going to start editing this down to a single uh, okay. single episode here. And I'm going to put in a, a last word on Rob Zombie because I, I don't want any hate mail this week. I'm just not in the mood. <laughs> Okay. Um, I love Rob Zombie. He is such a talent, and I'm mostly a fan of his music. I've been to his concerts, and he's always great. Puts on a heck of a show. Um, just because I'm not a fan of his Halloween movies doesn't mean I don't like him. You know, I'm just a purist with the Michael Myers and the Myers Curse and all that. I love that story. So, yeah, nothing against Rob Zombie. I love his other movies, and... These would have been good movies, too, actually, if it just wasn't Michael Myers and it wasn't Halloween. It might have made an interesting movie. So There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm certainly not a hater of Rob Zombie. I own all of his music. So Okay. Yeah, he's a great talent. Well, as always, you can get in contact with us directly by emailing us at madsaxon at yahoo.com or just look us up on Facebook. Um, happy to say that we've grown a little bit there. We broke over a hundred likes. I realize people are just <laughs> hitting that and maybe yeah. not necessarily listening to us, but the last few people that have joined have been, uh, new people that I didn't beg to like us. So <laughs> I was going to say they're hitting like, and then never coming back, never come back <laughs> again. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, hopefully you'll come and check out some of the images and the discussions that we have there. Um, we'd love to have you and love to hear from you. And as always, if you want to, send us an MP3 or send us any questions or comments on past shows. Uh, and again, we're grateful for the chance to talk to you folks every week. Thanks for listening.